Hello, this is James Berger, and this is Off the Press with the Bakersfield, California. And I'm here today with uh, our regular co-hosts, uh, Russell Johnson, uh, government affairs uh, consultant here in town, and Nicole Parra, faculty newly restarted with uh, Cal State Bakersfield. Uh, welcome to the next uh, the semester system, right? Yes. Uh, and our guest today, of course, is Congressman David Valadeo. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming along. It's been uh, it's been a fun time watching the last couple of races. It's been a, an interesting uh, time, I know, for you in D.C. and with all the issues that have come forward uh, and that you've been working on water and, and others like that. So uh, we're glad you're here. You're running again. We've got a, a, a Democratic opponent again. And uh, so I'm looking forward to following the race a third time. Um, but today we want to talk to you a little bit about kind of what it's been to be David Valadeo in office, um, bouncing back and forth between D.C. and the other coast. Um, and uh, and so I, I think we have some a few questions just kind of to get to know you a little better. I think uh, the, the folks up in Kings County know you pretty well, but um, not, uh, you know, I think we've gotten to know you here, but maybe we can get to know you a little bit better. Um, so Russell Johnson, uh, I'm going to dish to you since you've got some connections well, here. James, thank you, and, and Nicole, I want to just say congratulations on being back at school. Oh. But, uh, you know, back to school is always was, a fun time. And my class, they're wonderful. I yeah. have 60 students, and we extend the in invitation to you, <laughs> Congressman, to come by. I get a lot of elected officials, and thank you. It's, it's great to be back to school. Cool. So, um, Congressman Valdeo, you know. Can we go to David here? Yeah, that's, I was, <laughs> yeah, was going to go there. I just didn't feel uh, if it was appropriate. So, David, you, you've got an interesting story, and actually my wife's family has a very similar story to yours because my wife's family is Portuguese, and they're from a little further up the valley from the Gustine Modesto area. But tell us a little bit about your family's story, how they got here, because I think it's kind of a quintessential American story. So uh, my mom and dad actually met in the Azores, and uh, they started dating uh, there. And my dad, when he figured out that this is the one, uh, and this is who he wanted to marry. He actually came to the U.S. His cousin lined him up with a job uh, milking cows in Southern California. And uh, he ended up working at a plant. He got a, 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 had a decent job and bought a house. And when he felt he was settled, he went back, proposed to my mom, and brought her to the U.S. Uh, they married in L.A. My brothers uh, were both born in Southern California. And uh, a lot of his friends said he was crazy to start his own business and leave his great job. And uh, he decided to do it anyways. He started a little dairy. And, uh, you know, when you first start in the dairy business, you don't have the ability to go out and buy a bunch of land and buy cows right off the bat. So you have to start off somewhere. And the way he started off was he rented a little dairy. And that's about the place I was born. Um, I grew up in a very, very um, Portuguese family. I, mean, I still <laughs> to this day speak to my parents in Portuguese. Uh, my aunt uh, and a lot of family in the Azores will still call me quite a bit. Uh, quite a few of them will text me. I have some relatives coming this summer. Um, but no, it, it's, it's something that I'm very proud of. We're all very proud of our heritage and proud of where we come from, uh, but my mom and dad uh, are pretty much the American dream. They came here, they worked hard, they took risks. A lot of people, people said they were crazy, and uh, throughout my life I was able to experience that, sit through um, all those decisions, and even a lot of times sit through the meeting process uh, of if they're meeting with attorneys or meeting with uh, the accountant, and watch my dad with his broken English just do everything. I mean, uh, talking to, I, I always thought I was the one in there translating, but when we were having conversations about numbers, my, the accountant couldn't keep up with my dad. I mean, <laughs> he's just a very, I mean, a very smart man. He came to this country with four years of education, right. um, worked really hard, very humble man, very quiet. Uh, and that's why, for those who don't know me, I'm usually a very, very quiet person and very um, just like to stick to myself. So politics is a really uh, <laughs> uh, weird thing for my family. Uh, but no, even getting elected, I still remember sitting uh, on the assembly floor and my mom and dad up top, and uh, they, uh, they were tearing up. And I remember, and I've told this story a few times, but I remember looking up at them and thinking, are they crying tears uh, of pride, or are they uh, worried of the crowd I'm running with now? Because <laughs> <laughs> being in a political oh, no. office. But then even this past uh, winter, I decided I wanted to make some Port Portuguese sausage like my mom used to make, and uh, we hadn't done it in years, so my mom and dad and I got together, and we seasoned some por uh, pork meat and stuffed the sausage and did all that. And sitting there for a whole day stuffing sausage, we <laughs> talked about a lot of things. And we were talking about, uh, 
even my last campaign where a vice president of the United States actually came to the Valley and campaigned against me. Uh, president of the United States actually mentioned my opponent in a few races. And I told my mom and dad, I said, when you were coming to this country in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that any president of the United States would ever care enough or ever know who any of your children are? Right. And I just started laughing. I said, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> you know, so you made Portuguese linguisa with your family. That is an incredible process because I've, you know, I hunt a little bit, so I've had to clean animals and I've had to make my own sausage before with uh, boar, but I've never had to make uh, linguisa because that's a whole nother process all in and of itself. It takes a couple of days. Uh, the first night, obviously, is cutting up all the meat, putting it in, and seasoning it with all the different stuff, and, let, and then you have to let it uh, sit for a little bit, and then we stuffed it. The stuffing was... Um, a little more time consuming, but it was good because I had an opportunity to spend a lot more time with my parents than I had in a while. Uh, now with kids, with what I do now, uh, and still being very active on uh, dairy and all the other stuff that goes on, it's tough to have those opportunities to sit down, so it was good. It's interesting when you said you come from a very Portuguese family because I'm an outsider when I go to visit my wife and her family, and I'm actually going there this weekend, and we're going to see her relatives from the Azores that are here from Terceira. Uh. Um, but... Um, it's interesting because it's very family oriented. Everything is about family, and uh, the more time you get to spend with them, the better. So, now w with that, I bet it was a big push. You know, a couple of years ago when you had the opportunity to run for the state assembly, when someone came to you and said, or when you made the decision to say, "I'm going to run for office the first time," what drove you to decide to run for office, take time away from your family, right. and what keeps you going every day? Um, even when I was first considering it and I, I was honestly approached in the beginning, um, it wasn't something I have ever imagined myself doing still to this day, still surprised that I have this opportunity to, to do it. Um, but it was always about issues. I remember spending a lot of time going to, uh, the Capitol and talking to, I mean, a lot of times it'd be staffers, sometimes we'd be members of Congress and they just give you that line of, yeah, yeah I, I get where you're coming from. I understand. And you read their bios, you learn a little bit about them, they don't understand. And so um, I felt like me bringing my outside experience, bringing my background, well, I mean, one is a family that started from nothing, came to this country with literally nothing, and then watched it and was a part of that growth. And then uh, also being active in having a family and doing those types of things was something I thought was important to bring uh, to Washington and bring it to Sacramento when I was there. And uh, I still feel like that's important. I still feel like that perspective is, is important. And when I sit down with different groups, uh, I was uh, down here last week, met with a group uh, in an industry, and they were trying to relate their industry to me. And it's funny because they're explaining things, and they're naming the different agencies and all the hoops they're going through. And then I would lay down how this same group is doing this to my farm, my business, and going through the same exact. And they started to laugh. And there was probably about four or five different times, different examples that they – they agree. They're like, yeah, that's exactly what we're going through. And uh, it's, it's fun because it, it, people, you walk into these businesses. I do a lot of tours. I do a lot of, I, I, spend, I don't spend a lot of time in offices. I, I like to be out. I like to be out visiting people at their places of work. And I enjoy it because people will always take us in and they'll walk me around and they're all congressmen. And sometimes they don't take the time to really know how close I am to my own personal business. And they'll try to explain things and try to paint things a certain way. And some of the things I see right through, and some of them I'll, I'll ask. Sometimes I'll just kind of laugh it off and say, all right, this is obviously a little bit of a show. But, but the, it's nice having that personal experience and something that I can bring to the table. And then even in Washington, sitting down with my staff, and I try to get them out as much as possible as well, uh, or even other members of Congress, when we talk about different issues, bringing a perspective as, again, a businessman, instead of just being an attorney or just being a person who's basically ran for office their whole life, uh, I still have that connection. I still am part of that stop. I was on both farms today uh, before I came down to Bakersfield, before I made a couple stops in here now. So. And tell, tell me a little more about that. It leads me to something else I was curious about, which is, you know, how do you kind of keep up that pace? I mean, mm -hmm. you have to be in D.C., you have to be in the district connecting with your constituents, um, but you also got to maintain that family. You've got to build that, you know, all those things. you got kids you're, and your mm -hmm. wife. How do you keep it all going? Well, I spend a lot of time on the phone. And it, my business is still family business, so it's still my brothers. I'm partners with both my brothers, partners with uh, my dad and my uncle. Uh, my dad and uncle both receive and read text messages, which is amazingly <laughs> uh, handy. Uh, my dad was born in 43, so 
I mean, he doesn't always respond the best, but being able to text them messages, uh, I'm on all the emails from the businesses still. It doesn't mean I'm actually responding. I'm, there are certain things I'm not allowed to do, but I am allowed to see things and, and show up for meetings and show up and drive around the farm and make sure things are still going. But no, it's not like I'm getting up in the morning milking cows every morning. <laughs> I mean, it, there's right, just certain things right. you can't do. Sure. And when I decided to run for office, we did have to hire extra folks to do different things that I had done in the past. And so that played a role, and so that fell back. And a lot of times I'm on the farm driving around thinking, man, when I was here, this would not be going on. This is not the way I would do things. <laughs> and you have to let those things go because your br uh, my brothers are doing the best they can, uh, and I think they're doing a great job, but uh, there's less one person there. Right, and, and we all kind of think our way of doing things is the best so huh. <laughs> um but uh so and and how about the family i mean uh, how does it how does it work to be a dad i mean i'm a dad i got two young kids um how, how does it work to be a dad traveling back and forth do so the, ki the kids understand yeah the kids understand uh where i'm very lucky uh my wife is amazing she's done i mean she does everything uh, she she handles a lot she care, puts a lot on herself and she does cover a lot um, I do my best to be everywhere I possibly can um, but uh, I come home every sing, every single weekend and uh, but the one thing that makes my life a lot easier is uh, I, I married into a Navy family so my wife's little sister is currently in Virginia her uh, kids were at my house this weekend um, Dad is working in corrections, so he has to work. He, he stacks up as much as he can on the weekend, so during the week he can take care of the kids at school. But, yeah, the kids will come hang out with us. Uh, our kids know a lot of other military kids. Uh, and so when their parents are gone for eight months, nine months out of the year, Dad's just gone during the week, usually only three nights. Uh, last night, uh, yesterday I left before they uh, woke up. No, I, th I saw them in the morning, but uh, last night I got in after them because I left here pretty, uh, pretty late. Um, but you do your best to balance everything. And uh, if you want to compare to truckers, for example, I mean, there's a lot of truckers that are out, construction uh, workers, a lot of them are out for long periods of time. Normally, a normal week, I'm gone four days, three nights. Okay. And so very doable. Um, people talk about moving their families back to Washington. I never once considered that because I knew I'd have to come home a lot. And if my kids are playing sports, which they all do, uh, I want to be able to at least attend all those events. Uh, swim, my oldest swims. He's almost as tall as me, and he's 13. Uh, my 10-year-old daughter swims soccer and uh, looking at basketball now, and my 6-year-old swim and soccer and talking about basketball. I did a little bit of baseball. Uh, my wife's 4-H leader. Uh, the two oldest, now the youngest, is going to be in 4-H. Uh, my wife was also the room mom for two of the classes. Uh, she'll be a room mom for one more kid this year. And then she's also coaching my daughter's soccer team. <laughs> and, um, oh, my goodness. What does she not do? <laughs> <laughs> She's a woman. <laughs> and so I ended up actually coaching my uh, youngest t uh, soccer team a little bit, but I signed up as an emergency backup because <laughs> right. the two uh, coaches, friends of ours, uh, are both firefighters, and they actually both got called off to fires at one point. And uh, so I was showing up at all the soccer practices in the background and then trying to be helpful where I could, but it's really hard to coach. But they're six-year-olds, that time yeah. five-year-olds. It was more doable, uh, right. but as they get older, they, they need consistency in their coaching and everything. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely an interesting balance. We all kind of do it in our own ways but as parents, but uh, it's a little bit extreme, two could, coasts. Could you imagine in the old days uh, when uh, members were traveling back and forth and not having FaceTime and texting and all the other things that we take for granted? Uh, I staffed a congressman, and let me tell you, it was fax machines. It was cutting out articles with glue sticks and sending them, faxing them to the district. It was with a congressman whose phone had the worst uh, reception, and sometimes that phone ended up outside the car. Uh, <laughs> it was hard. And then we had the um, Thomas Guide. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Driving a member around. So just as it was hard for members as a staffer and especially as a, someone from agriculture. I mean, Cal was in the office at 5 a.m., which meant I was there at 430. You guys have the one of the hardest uh, work ethics. Let me tell you, as you know, staffing him for 10 years that I also, um, you know, can the senior staff over there, I can definitely relate to the working for a member, especially in the Central Valley. Mm -hmm. And listening to you, David, it reminds me so much of him. You know, he wasn't someone who enjoyed the campaign, but he was good. He was uh, good on policy and um, no drama. And I know we're going to get to the campaign, and that's one of the things that I respect a lot about you and your team is that I wish – I would have got some tips earlier, but you guys, you do the work, and you don't let a lot of the noise get into your business. And we'll talk about that a little later, but I really respect that about you and your team. Thank you. Uh, I have a 4-H question. I was never, <laughs> oh, I no. was never a 4-H oh, no. uh, kid, 
But that's a, you know, 4-H is pretty impressive as an organization. How does your wife, like, how do you decide which animals our kids are going <laughs> to raise? And what, and what r- animals are your kids raising right now? So that's par- part of the misconception of 4-H. Uh, most people assume it's just about animals. And uh, because of what I do now, it's very hard for me to, for my kids to do the animal part. They haven't got to that part yet. Uh, kids, uh, my wife is only on the citizenship. That's where she's a 4-H leader. She's not the head of the whole 4-H organization there in, at, at our, uh, in our district. But she handles the citizenship, so she works with the kids on doing th- different things like making blankets for dog shelters, uh, delivering food to sailors that they can ship off, and uh, she did that some months ago. Uh, my oldest did some uh, welding classes. Oh. Uh, there are some groups that do archery. There's some that do uh, some mechanics. And then you obviously get in the show where you can have rabbits and chickens and then even get into the beef and, and larger animals like that. Excellent. Yeah, I never got into the 4-H. The just a band kid. You know, <laughs> it, the one thing that I think is important, especially I, I put it on my, my son a lot because I do like to work with my hands. That's something I've always enjoyed and I continue to do. I'll drag him out a lot, uh, like even around the house doing stuff. I, I put in some ceiling fans uh, the other day, replaced some old ones that were in, in bad shape. And so I took my son along and watched. He was learning to wire stuff. And I think that's important for your kids to learn today. And I actually think 4-H mm-hmm. is one of those places where you can learn those things. And if there's something that you have as a talent as a person and your kid's in 4-H and they're not offering it, they will allow, most 4-H groups will allow you to show up and say, hey, this is something I think kids should learn. And I'm willing to put the class on and teach kids and then see who signs up for it. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So tell us a little bit, kind of, you, you've talked a lot about being here and, and, and living in Kings County in your life here. What is it like? What kind of surprised you most about D.C. when you went back there when you first um, took the, the seat and, and went to work? You know, um, the thing that probably so – I, w- I had a pretty good understanding of what goes on in D.C. because of uh, working different policy things for, for Land O'Lakes or all the different dairy groups I've worked with. And, you know, uh, you, you fly back there as a farmer so that you can tell your own personal story, but you got to learn a little bit about the process. Um, the thing that I think probably surprised me the most um, is the amount of misinformation that's out there. Uh, mm. A lot of the amount of stuff, and I think social media has had a big role in this. Uh, the stuff that gets pushed out, uh, if a person has an agenda and they write a story, and not necessarily reporters, for example, but people have their own blogs, and now almost everybody's got their own so what platform <laughs> platform to say what they want, and a lot of times not true. And I've I've seen a lot of really really bad information out there. And it's a shame because it shouldn't be. Another one was just personalities in general, just people uh, that watching them on TV, I would have thought they were one way and then found out, no, they're a lot different. Uh, some guys are a lot more friendly. than uh, When you see them on TV, they look so serious and mean. And when you talk <laughs> to them, you're like, oh, this guy's actually a pretty, pretty nice guy. And, and some of those things. But as far as the policy itself, um, frustrated uh, because of the misinformation out there. Uh, you'll get a lot of phone calls from people, and, and we do our best to – to do our job and make sure we do what's right, but also try to inform as much as possible. Now, you're also serving with some of your colleagues from Sacramento. I looked at the roster, and some of my friends and your friends are there. Are, do you run into Juan Vargas and yeah. some of uh, – what is that? And mostly Democrats, How uh, I think. Yeah, Steve Doug Knight. Doug LaMoffa's out there, too, Steve right? Knight, Doug LaMoffa, Paul yeah. Cook, obviously Kevin right. McCarthy, Jeff Denham on the Republican yeah. side, uh, Mark Desanye on the Democrat yeah. side, um, and then you've got Norma Torres. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then obviously you said Juan, Juan Vargas. Vargas. I never knew Tony. Um, what's his name from Southern from LA area? Ah, Tony Cardenas. Huh? Oh, Cardenas. Yes, LA I, City Council. Yeah. I didn't know him right. until he got to Congress. Okay. He served in the assembly before I got there. Right. Um, Mimi Walters now, but no, uh, Juan Vargas. I run into him quite a bit. Mm-hmm. He's actually got a really good reputation in mm-hmm. DC. People yeah. really like him. Uh, easy guy to deal with mm, and right. one thing he loves to do is do night tours you mm-hmm. see him walking around the Capitol at night all the time he doesn't sleep he used to build construction his house on downtown sacramento during the night like this guy he never sleeps he was a jesuit he when he would speak on the assembly floor people were silent they just listen usually people are talking and but juan vargas so I'm glad that you're able to connect in D.C., and he's someone definitely I could see you. Norma Torres and I, uh, we didn't deal a lot in Sacramento, but we're actually co-chairs of uh, the Central America Caucus. Oh, yeah. nice. And uh, it was fun because we sat in and we met with, uh, I think it was the president of uh, Guatemala that came to visit us in the Capitol. And 
you know, they bring mm-hmm. in translators, right. so you've got all these other people sitting around the table, and... Your Spanish is impeccable, right? Well, I struggle, right. but I get by. Right. Uh, obviously, it's not as good as hers, right. uh, but it was nice to be able to sit there, and the look on her face is pretty funny. <laughs> That's great. Um, all right, we got to take a little bit of a break here. We'll be back uh, in just a little bit with Off the Press. Thanks for uh, coming to watch the show on Bakersfield.com and on uh, Facebook, uh, the Californians' Facebook page. We'll be right back with David Valadez. 